wear those occasionally out, so he thinks you're army. Never mind. I, I will scratch you. So sometimes I'll scratch him right here when here and he'll fall over so I can scratch him on the tummy. It's really funny. What you doing? Little piggy? Besides eating wood chips. Morning guys, so here I am in front of our backyard and we have a lot of food that grows in this space. We don't just grow a garden in this space though. In the winter we have our goats underneath the deck and then they're also in this area that you see that's full of tomatoes and squash. And the reason we do that is because we want the goats really close to the house. We want them safe in the winter. We also want to be able to take them into the garage for milking so that it is not physically uncomfortable for us. The other reason that we want the goats here in the winter is that their manure and their hay and their straw does a lasagna garden for us so that we never get weeds in this area. It just turns into better soil every year. Well, this year, now that we're back on the property and we're not in Tulsa or driving around looking at tiny houses, I wanted to see if we could take that a little bit further. Could we raise a pig in our backyard? And the reason I wanted to know was because we've lived in small places before that didn't have a lot of acreage. And I wanted to kind of push the envelope a little to see how much food can we really grow just in a backyard. Now, we are bringing in all of our feed for our animals, with the exception of some things that we feed them out of the garden. We are feeding them pellets and hay and, and things like that. We are not self-reliant when it comes to growing our own feed for our animals. So, we have this year a pig. You will have seen him in videos with Kaya where he follows her around. We got one pig because we wanted him to be friendly with humans. We wanted him to rely on us for companionship. One of the main reasons for that is that last year when we raised three pigs, uh, we had a very, very difficult time getting them into the trailer. They were almost 400 pounds, they were enormous, and they wouldn't get into the trailer, they wouldn't follow us in, and, and it was traumatic for them and traumatic for us to get them in that trailer. Uh, the other reason is that we want to be able to move our pig to where we want our soil turned over. I want to be able to use him as a rototiller in my garden. And then the last reason I wanted to do this was to see how bad would the smell get? Is it really possible to have a pig in your backyard? And so when we made this uh, adventure decision, we put him right next to the house. He is underneath the deck of our home and that's to give him shelter, but also to keep him close to the house so we can hear him. We wanted to see how uncomfortable is it, how unrealistic is it to keep him that close to the house. And there are some tips and tricks that we've learned along the way. First and foremost, you need lots of mulch. You need to use a lot of sawdust or a lot of straw to keep carbon in his home. We have sawdust all the way underneath the deck. Anywhere that he goes, there's sawdust. Kai goes in once a day with a bucket and a pitchfork and she cleans up his poop as if he was a dog. And the last thing is that we have his food is dry pellet form. We do give him food from the kitchen but in small amounts, only the amount that he can eat in maybe a few minutes. We bring it to him as he needs it. We do not leave a large amount of food under the deck for him that is wet or smelly. We make sure that we're not splashing things on his um, shelter because that will attract flies. So we're going to see how long we can keep him and if he remains friendly and if we can use him on the property. He's going to get big. He's a Berkshire and um, the reason we did it this way and only got a single pig is we wanted to be able to move him, have him follow us and be able to work with him as an animal that is more like a pet than as a livestock. 
and once we have this experiment underway we will either keep him if it turns out really great we'll keep him if it doesn't turn out really great at the end of the season we will butcher him come january and um but at this point it's working really well he follows kai pretty well he does terrorize the chickens a little bit and he's figured out that they lay eggs and so when he finds a nest of eggs he will eat them very quickly we have to be careful to be with him around the fruit trees because he will dig up and root in around the fruit trees if we're not there to kind of squirt him with the hose and get him away from it and we would like to train him to an electric wire an electric fence so that we can put him in places and let him root where we want without him digging under and escaping not that he'd escape very far he'd come right back to us but um that's what we're looking at right now we've had him for about two months now he's grown a lot he looks a lot better than his parents did they didn't feed him very well and we were actually kind of second guessing ourselves about whether or not we wanted to buy him because of how poor the parents looked but um, because we wanted to do it as more like a pet type of a situation and we were experimenting with just having a pig in the backyard I felt like it was okay to get him but now he's he's almost as big as his parents were and we've only had him for two months so good feed and rest and shelter from heat and friendly pets and exercise have made a big difference for him and um, we're really happy with his progress up to this point one thing I'd recommend is do not feed your pigs from your hands always feed them in a container because they will be like dogs or horses that are given treats too much they will start to mouth your hands and you don't want a pig mouthing your hand they get bigger over time and he's going to be 400 pounds or maybe even bigger by the time he's fully grown you don't want an animal that's 400 pounds to think that people's hands hold treats he's big enough to overpower somebody you don't want him to have that kind of disrespect so we do not feed our pig with our hands we always put the food into the containers he has to find food on the ground we are not food and we also do not tolerate him uh, mouthing us or bumping his nose against us we pop him on the mouth pop him on the nose if he gets too aggressive that way and that's important to have manners if at any point he stops having manners we will put him into a fence we will fatten him up to be butchered and we will see if we want to try again or if it was just a good enough experiment to kind of move on so I do make my own ham and bacon with salt curing I will show you some of my previous experiments my bacon is um, my bacon and ham are completely finished after about I don't know maybe three months at which point they are shelf stable I put them in a breathable bag you do not want to store freshly cured bacon in plastic unless you put it in the fridge it has to be able to breathe and get rid of moisture that's the trick I cure it in the winter in my smokehouse open air already been salted now I can just store it on my shelf in my kitchen I do still keep it in a fabric bag that I sewed and there's air exchange there and it keeps bugs out but bugs don't really care about salted products usually because they're salted and there's a special way that you need to prepare salt pork and generally if you're wanting to cook it just to eat it you need to soak it first and bring some of that salinity out otherwise if you're putting it in a soup or something then you just put it in as is and it adds flavoring to your soup so hopefully that was helpful thanks for tuning in and we'll talk to you later He loves eggs. Speaking of which, did you collect eggs this morning? Hey, don't hit him. He found him fair and square. Nope. Come on. Come on. Just let him finish him. You should have collected him better. I've always known where to grab him to get him out. But you know darn well where those eggs are, same as he does. So you should have collected them better. So let me hand you some milk so that he gets rewarded for coming in, okay? It's not his fault you didn't pick them up. Don't break the jar, please. It looks like you need to feed and water him, too.
And we use this for cooking instead of butter. If we're gonna be um, frying something, we'll use this or duck fat and stuff. This whole pot was full of fat and it's gonna render down to about maybe two gallons worth of rendered lard. All right, this is what is left over. If I were to continue taking the oil off and cooking it down, it would get crispy and then it would be what's called crackling. But what I like to do with it is freeze it in these individual containers and I feed it to the chickens on really cold days. And um, in my opinion, it is reminiscent for the chickens of um, the fat you get from bugs. They seem to do really well with it and they eat one and then I pop out another one. I don't have a lot. Um, in fact, I just found another package of lard that I need to do down. So on to the next project. These have to go in the fridge and solidify. Once they solidify, I pop them out and put them in a bag.